Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I would like to feature a custom horn that was built for a customer using the ViaWave SRT7 Pure Ribbon Tweeter. This is horn number 1671. And so in this video, I'm just going to show you some objective test data and then also uh, my subjective listening impressions on this particular tweeter and horn combination. So um, you can see it here, it's solid walnut, CNC machined. I uh, built a custom cradle for the driver, which is on small rubber feet. So it just perches on top of the ES290 by radial. And you can see here that I've also incorporated the design language, if you want to call it that, of the larger by radial, which has the 10 degree draft angles. Um, it wasn't required for this particular tweeter to have those draft angles it simply helps match the, the the visual appearance of the tweeter with the bigger horn so uh, solid walnut and yeah so uh, let's get right into some of the measurement side so I measured off axis at 15 30 45 and 60 degrees off axis and so you can see that uh, indeed the horn provides consistent off axis coverage and you have uh, pattern control right down to around two kilohertz. So, um, looking at in, uh, in reducing actually the crossover point. So in this graph here, it's shown with a two kilohertz crossover high pass uh, with a fourth order slope, and I did that with the um, active filter that's part of the Hypex FA501 plate amp. And so if I reduce the crossover point and retake the same measurements, you can see that there is a uh, increase in sensitivity around the two kilohertz point, which it almost sums to a flat response. So the question becomes, uh, is this driver capable of reproducing bandwidth from say 1.2 kilohertz all the way up into the upper treble? Um, that's certainly what ViaWave has touted in their marketing that this uh, tweeter has some special features that allows it to be used at a much lower crossover point than other pure ribbon tweeters. And so I'm going to conduct some multi-tone tests to see how this tweeter fares uh, in terms of distortion at that low of a crossover point. So um, burst decay, very clean. Cumulative spectral decay, very clean. Uh, step response is shown with an extremely fast rise and decay time and it's very quick to settle without any anomalies shown there so very very good behavior you can see here this is the impedance sweep as well as the phase response now we do see some resonances just below the one kilohertz point with a small small uh, undulation there at around two kilohertz so um, you can note as well that the impedance drops to half an ohm if you're down um, down into the lower part of the bandwidth so that's uh, typical typically the characteristic of a pure pure ribbon and then you do see some mild inductive rise in the driver as well um, looking at the nonlinear function of this tweeter I used a dynamic microphone to capture intermodulation distortion and I used a six band per octave multi-tone test signal from one kilohertz up to 20 kilohertz and so you can see here the test tones and then my noise floor in my measurement system, which is pegged at um, 130 dB down. So in this uh, instance, I'm just using, I believe, like a 500 hertz high pass. So we're feeding a full one kilohertz tone into the driver. And so it's a really uh, good stress test to see how the driver fares. So I started uh, my test with a very moderate SPL of 60 dB at one meter. And I wasn't able to see any kind of sideband noise products being generated um, that was below the measurement threshold of my system. So um, increasing the test SPL to 65 dB, we still don't see anything. Increasing it to 70 dB, we start to see just, um, actually no, there's nothing being revealed. So, so far so good. Um, the driver's behaving quite well at a 70 dB one meter SPL level. As we get into 80 dB, we do see some noise products occurring at around two kilohertz and at four kilohertz. Increasing it further, uh, we see things get exponentially worse with the noise at minus 52 dB at the two kilohertz point. Okay, so if we increase um, the, S the test SPL to 90 dB, 
at one meter, then we can see that distortion does rise quickly. So even though we've, we've increased the test SPL by only 5 dB, we're seeing our distortion rise by 10 dB. Okay, so we're starting to kind of get to that brick wall um, capability of the driver and then it seems to be at around 90 dB, which is, um, you know, in a medium sized listening room with a stereo pair, um, this might be acceptable. Um, but it's certainly not capable of, of concert level output um, in a medium sized listening room. So if we increase the crossover point from what I stated earlier, from two kilohertz up to four kilohertz fourth order at the same 90 dB test SPL, you can see the result here. Distortion comes down and we're back down to a noise floor of 70 dB at 10 kilohertz. You can still see some sideband noise products, but um, certainly increasing the crossover point uh, drastically improves the distortion performance across the frequency bandwidth of the driver. Okay, so um, increasing the crossover point again even further from four kilohertz to six kilohertz, we can see the noise products um, almost completely disappear. Um, so if we increase the crossover point from six kilohertz to eight kilohertz, you can see that the distortion is completely gone and it's better than 77 dB, which is an excellent result. Um, if we decide then to increase the test SPL to see where uh, we can be as far as uh, maximum SPL using a high crossover point, we increase it from 90 to 95 dB test SPL, we can see those noise products start to reappear at minus 70 dB down. Um, so increasing, um, like I'll just skip to 100 dB, you can see here that it's still a very respectable uh, mark at minus 68 and then from 100 to 105 we still have distortion only at minus 65 dB so if you're using a higher crossover point on this ri ribbon tweeter then you certainly are capable of getting very high output SPL from this driver so um, that's uh, basically a, a good snapshot of the nonlinear capabilities of the driver Subjective listening, um, I found that the tweeter was extremely smooth, offering excellent transient detail. Now I directly compared it against the Fostex T96A, which had a little bit more expressiveness and it sounded, uh, the, the Fostex had a little bit more expressiveness and had a little bit more realism in stringed instruments such as acoustic and electric guitar. Um, so uh, that's it. Uh, for my test, I did have a comment there about uh, Hi-Fi Compass, Hi-Fi Compass's review of the same tweeter, and they noted that the driver was capable of 104 dB uh, with a first order crossover at 2 kilohertz. So that's uh, quite a departure from what I was able to achieve, um, but I do suspect that that was uh, directly related to the test tone signal that they're using, which was just a simple harmonic distortion test using a, a single uh, sine sweep test tone and so you're not going to get those modulation uh, sideband products occurring in a test like that so um, certainly um, when you're looking at objective test data you need to understand uh, what the test signal is and how that relates in uh, terms of the test results that you're getting so apples to apples right so um, it's an excellent ribbon tweeter I've tested other ribbon tweeters and certainly this one does have a much higher output capability. Um, typically, ribbon tweeters are, they do require a very high crossover point and um, are very limited in their output capability. And so um, the only alternative um, I've seen is from RAL with the large ribbon area, um, you know, the, the very, very tall RAL. And with um, horn loading those, you're able to get uh, very decent output capability. So. There you have it, um, the ViaWave SRT7 with Horn 1671. Take care and have a great day.